three uniform bricks each of length 60 cm and mass small m are arranged as shown in the figure considering only the length of the bricks considering only the length of the bricks find the distance of the center of mass of the system of the bricks from the wall so how much far away is the center of mass of this entire system from the wall if we consider origin at the wall itself suppose this point is 0 comma 0 then what is the value of xcm x coordinate of the center of mass of this entire system this is another way for asking this question and let me tell you the formula we will be using to solve this question do you remember the formula how to calculate xcm well you must know what is x1 the coordinate of the center of mass of the first rod you must know the what is the value of x2 the coordinate of the center of mass of the second rod and you must know what is x3 the coordinate of the center of mass of the third rod using these three coordinates we can find xcm as m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 divided by total mass of the system what is the total mass it is m1 plus m2 plus m3 yes now we know these masses are basically equal so in the numerator we are getting uh, x1 plus x2 plus x3 and we are multiplying that by mass m we have taken mass as common in the denominator we are getting 3m and you know what this m gets cancelled out wow so we have x1 plus x2 plus x3 divided by 3 so if you tell me x1 if you tell me x2 and if you tell me x3 i will tell you xcm oh so our mission is to find the coordinates of the center of masses of each and every brick individually and basically we have to find the x coordinates so let's go and find the x coordinate of the center of mass of the blue brick length of the blue brick is equal to 60 centimeter basically length of each brick is equal to 60 centimeter every brick is of 60 centimeter length and where will be the center of mass of this uniform brick well we can see the center of mass of this uniform brick will be at the center of this brick yes yes so this means we have to move a distance of 30 centimeter from the end of this brick to reach the center of mass right okay so center of mass of brick a is actually 30 centimeter from the wall so we get the value of x1 x1 is equals to 30 centimeter all right now let's calculate x2 x2 is the distance of center of mass of the red brick from the wall how do we get that well very simple we can see this end of the red brick can you see this end yes what is the distance of this end from the wall? What is this distance? This is this is 60 plus 30. This is 90 centimeter away from the wall. Okay, very good. Now, if we are standing on this end, suppose, and we want to reach the center of mass of this red brick, how much do we move towards the wall to reach the center? You will say, well, if you want to reach the center from this end, you must travel about 30 centimeter. Okay. So, if we want to know the total, the total distance of the center of brick B from the wall, this would be 90 minus 30, isn't it? Yes. And 90 minus 30 is basically 60 centimeter. Okay. So we got x2. x2 is equal to 60 centimeter. Now let's talk about x3. What is x3? x3 is the distance of the center of mass of the third brick. Distance of the center of mass of the third brick from the wall. This is basically x3. 
and how are we going to calculate x3 well here's a trick let's see this end of the green rod can you see this end yes how much far away is this end from the wall what is the distance of this end from the wall well we can see it is 90 centimeter plus 15 centimeter this means this is 105 centimeter away from the wall 105 centimeter away from the wall now we are standing on this end and we want to reach the center of this green rock so how much distance should we move towards the wall well we must move about 30 centimeter towards the wall okay so 105 105 minus 30 will give us x3 right or not right so 105 minus 30 is basically 75 centimeter all right we know what is x1 we know what is x2 we know what is x3 can we find their sum yes x1 plus x2 plus x3 we can find that and then we will divide that by 3 so 30 plus 60 this is 90 and when we add 75 we get 165 this is nothing but x1 plus x2 plus x3 okay this is 165 now let's divide this thing by 3 if we divide 165 by 3 we are getting 55 centimeter wow so if we go back we can see x cm is coming out to be 55 centimeter and option b will be the right answer for this question a particle is moving on a circular path of radius 20 meter so we know the radius the speed of the particle at any instant is given by v is equals to 3t square minus 5t so we know how the speed varies with time what is the magnitude of the total acceleration of the particle at t is equals to 5 seconds the total acceleration of the particle is asked in the question at t is equals to 5 seconds okay but uh, we must know some concept to calculate the total acceleration the concept is like this the total acceleration is the vector sum of two accelerations one is the centripetal acceleration ac and the other acceleration is the tangential acceleration at now if the object is moving in circular track and we can see that the velocity is v then ac is given by v square by r all right and what is at what is the tangential acceleration well by definition tangential acceleration is nothing but rate of change of speed dv by dt note the uh, centripetal acceleration can only change the direction of the velocity it cannot change the magnitude of velocity it is the tangential acceleration which is responsible for change in magnitude of this velocity all right now when we will uh, find the vector sum of these two acceleration we will get the total acceleration and the total acceleration looks like this this is a and we can see that a is nothing but whole under root of ac square plus at square right right now let's calculate the value of ac and at of this particle at t is equals to 5 seconds now what do we have we have what is the speed as a function of time in the question it was said v is equals to 3t square minus 5t so here we write uh, v is equals to 3t square minus 5t now when we calculate the speed at t is equals to 5 seconds we can see we are getting 3 times 25 uh, minus 25 this means 2 times 25 which is nothing but uh, 50 okay the value of ac is 50 nice we are very happy with that now let's calculate what is at 
what is the tangential acceleration of the particle at this point. Tangential acceleration is dv by dt, dv by dt and we can see dv by dt is uh, 60 minus 5 and at t is equals to 5 seconds when we place the t is equals to 5 we get 25. So this is the tangential acceleration and what was the centripetal acceleration? AC was V square by R. Now V at t is equals to 5 seconds was 50. So here we have 50 square which is 2500 and we divided by R. R was given to be 20 meters. Now this means 25 is 100. And we can say that AC is nothing but 25 times 5 which is 125. This is AC. Now we can calculate the total acceleration. A will be whole under root of AC square plus AT square. What is AC? AC is 125. So we have 125 square over here. And then we add AT square. What is AT? What is tangential acceleration? AT was 25. So we have 25 square over here. Now this will give us the value of acceleration A and A is coming out to be whole under root of 16250. Very large number. Whole under root of 16250. And now we can mark option A whole under root of 16250 as the correct answer for our question. A string is attached to a light thread whirled in vertical circle with a constant speed v. How nice! So we are uh, maintaining the speed to be constant. We are externally doing so. So with our effort, the speed is maintained to be constant at every point of this circular motion. Speed is constant. Nice. The radius of the circle is 10 meter. Radius is also given. The maximum and the minimum tension, the maximum and the minimum tension of the string is in the ratio 4 is to 1. And what is the velocity v? So we have to find the speed of the particle. And what is given? The ratio of tension T max divided by T minimum. Maximum tension divided by minimum tension. And this is 4 is to 1. So with the help of this, we have to find what is the speed V. This is the question. We understand the question, right? Right. Now, how are we supposed to solve this question? Well, first of all, there is circular motion. That is the good news. And when we want to analyze the uh, circular motion, we can take the help of a pseudo force or in this case, centrifugal force. So when we move into the reference frame of the particle which is moving in the circular motion, we will use centrifugal force. And you know what? Centrifugal force always acts away from the center. This is mv square by r when the particle is at the bottommost point and this is mv square by r when the particle is at topmost point. Nice, nice. Now there is another force on the particle, except tension, there is another force, there is mg, okay, mg always acts in the downward direction, we know that. And there is the third force, which is tension. So let's talk about tension for a while. Tension is acting in the upward direction when the particle is at the bottom most point. And can you see this tension is actually opposing mg and mv square by r together. So the total strength of mg and mv square by r, if we combine them, our tension at the bottommost point opposes that. So tension is maximum at the bottommost point. Can you see that? Yes. And as the particle moves up and it reaches the highest point, mv square by r, mv square by r and mg are in opposite direction. 
so the net outward force on the particle in the reference frame of the particle itself we can see is minimum at the highest point so net inward force tension will balance the net outward force so tension is minimum at the highest point i will just write t minimum like this t minimum and at the bottom most point i will write t maximum okay so let's take their ratios now so if we take the ratio according to the question this ratio must be equal to 4 is to 1 isn't it yes so we are getting something interesting we are getting uh, v square by r plus g is equals to 4 v square by r minus 4 g isn't it and this means 3 v square by r is equals to 5 g nice yes so let's take r on the other side we have 3 v square is equals to 5 g r and we are getting the value of v v is nothing but under root 5 g r divided by 3 now what is g g was given to be 10 what is r r was given to be 10 so g r is 100 so this means v is coming out to be uh, under root 500 divided by 3 which means 10 under root 5 by 3 now this thing 10 under root 5 by 3 uh, this will be close to about 12.9 or something like that anyhow it is greater than 10 we can say that so it is about 12.9 when we do the exact calculation and we can see that in the options option c 12.9 meter per second is the right answer for our question here is a nice and easy question based on center of mass the question says which of the following points is the likely position of the center of mass of the system shown in the figure can you see the system shown in the figure yes we can see okay describe the system for me well the system consists of a hollow sphere the lower half is really heavy it is filled with sand and the upper part is filled with air okay so this is the system now what is the center of mass we are talking about what is the center of mass well we can roughly define center of mass as the point uh, at which the entire mass of the system can be said to be concentrated so that is center of mass okay so now the question arises where will the center of mass lie will it lie at position a will it lie at point b exactly at the center of the sphere or will it lie at point c somewhere lower somewhere in the sand or will it lie at point d at the bottom most point of this sphere where will the center of mass lie this is the question but before we dive into this question let me ask you a more simple question Let's say we have a similar type of hollow sphere, but now we fill this entire thing with sand. So everywhere we are filling it with sand. There is no air, no gap left for air. Now, where do you think the center of mass of this new system lies? You will say, well, the mass of the upper part is equal to mass of the lower part. That's why due to symmetry, the center of mass will lie exactly at the middle of this sphere. It will lie at the center. Yes, you are right. But now let's come back to our question. In our question, the lower part is filled with sand and the upper part with air. This means the mass of lower part is larger than the mass of upper part. And this means the center of mass will not be exactly at the middle. It will be somewhere lower because the lower part has the larger mass. So point C, this point C is uh, representing the correct position of center of mass of this system. Now we can mark option C which contains point C as the correct answer for our question. 
four squares P, Q, R and S, each of side 4 cm and uniform thickness are capped together as shown in the figure. So we are combining these four squares together. This is square 1, this is square 2 and this is square 3 and this is square 4. And can you see that this combination is a big square? Yes. So this is how we combine the squares. Then the position of the center of mass of the combination of the square with respect to the center of mass of P will be. So position of the center of mass of the combination of the square. Where is this position? Where do you think will the center of mass of this entire combination lie? This combination is a big square. And where is the center of mass of this big square? Yes, it is at the geometric center of this square. It is at point C. Okay. Now we have to find this position with respect to center of mass of P. With respect to center of mass of square P. Now can you see square P? Yes. Let's focus that square P. This is the square P. We raise all the other squares. Now where is the center of mass of this square P? The center of mass of this square P is at the geometric center of this square. Yes. So here is the center of mass of P. And by the way, we can get the coordinates of this center of mass of square P. The length of the side of the square was 4 cm, right? So this square was 4 cm by 4 cm. And the coordinate of the uh, center of the square is 2 cm, 2 cm. Yes! So, we have the coordinates of the point which is at the center of square P. Now, we have to find the location of point C with respect to point P. What is the location of C with respect to P? This is the question. Well, we can see straight away that this is nothing but uh, position of C minus position of P. Yes. And what are the position uh, vectors of these two points? Well, we can straight away say position vector of point C is 4i cap plus 4j cap. Can you see that from the figure? This side is 4, this side is 4. So this is how we reach point C. We move four steps in the x direction, then four steps in the y direction, we reach C. And what if we want to reach P? Well, we move two steps in the x direction and two steps in the y direction and we reach uh, point P. Okay, P, P is not the point, P is the square, but we reach the center of the, uh, this uh, square P. Okay, now we can see that this is position of uh, center C with respect to center of P. And now this is coming out to be 2i cap plus 2j cap. Okay. So this is how we get the coordinates. The relative coordinates are 2 comma 2. Can you see that? Yes. So option D, 2 centimeter comma 2 centimeter will be the right answer for our question.